Greetings, everybody. Chaplain Bob Walker here, Light of the World Ministries. In John 8, 12, Jesus said, I am the light of the world. He that followeth me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. And that's eternal life, people. And that's pretty much what we are going to take a look at tonight. I'm really tired of talking about bad stuff that's getting ready to happen. Let's talk about the kingdom of the Lord, the kingdom of Christ, what some people will call heaven. But it's going to be heaven on earth. Well, not this earth. This earth's going to be burned up. It's going to be purified by fire. Let me tell you something. Fire has been used in the past to purge surgical instruments for surgery so that they were useful for not contaminating somebody with disease. So think of it that way. I did an entire study on fire in the Bible. Playlist, actually. So, let's turn your King James Bibles, or Geneva, to the book of Isaiah. We are going to read chapter 65 and 66, and then we're going to go to the book of Revelation. We, I've done a lot of studies of what is going to lead up to the period, the time, what is called the time of Jacob's trouble. Jacob's name was changed by the Lord to Israel, which means rules with God or prince of God. Jacob was the grandson of Abraham, which God made a covenant with. God didn't make a covenant with the whole world. Didn't happen. Matter of fact, when you read the 12 gates for the New Jerusalem. Each gate is for one of the 12 tribes. There is no 13th Gentile gate. It's not there, people. It's not there. So I don't know where they get this whole world 13th Gentile gate. Non-Israel, that is. All right, with that in mind, and we're going we're gonna to take a look at that. Let's read Isaiah 65, verse 1. I am. Isn't that funny? When Moses was in the desert, and he saw the burning bush, and God spoke to him, he says, well, maybe the burning bush, maybe not. I, I, I haven't read the story recently, so... But the Lord says, I'm going to send you to Pharaoh and tell him to let my people go that they may worship me. And Moses said, Lord, when they ask me your name, what am I going to tell them? And the Lord said, tell them I am that I am. Tell them that I am have sent thee unto them. Now, I might be paraphrasing there, but you get the idea. Jesus said, when the Jews asked Jesus, he, well, Jesus said that uh, before Abraham was, I am. And they said, you're not even 40 years old, and have you seen Abraham? <laughs> wow. Yeah, Christ. Before Abraham was, I am. He, uh, Jesus said that uh, their fathers had rejoiced to see his day. And they said, well, you're not even 40 years old. And you've seen Abraham. He's, Before Abraham was, I am. They knew what Christ was saying. Believe me, they knew. Because they were going to stone him. He says, 
for many good works have I shown thee, and for what good work have are you going to stone me? And they said, For a good work we stone thee not, but for blasphemy, because thou, being a man, makest thyself God. And that might be a paraphrase, but you get the idea. They knew what Christ was saying. Believe me, they knew. So, Christ came to set the captives free. Isaiah 65 and verse 1, I am, I am, sought of them that asked not for me. I am found of them that sought me not. I said, Behold me, behold me, unto a nation that was not called by my name. I have spread out my hands all the day unto a rebellious people. Look in the mirror, everybody. Me too. Me too. Especially me. Boy, I tell you what, when I was in high school, I'm surprised the Lord didn't kill me out of hand. Glad he didn't, but I deserved it. I have spread out my hands all the day unto a rebellious people, which walketh in a way that was not good after their own thoughts. A people that provoketh me to anger continually to my face, that sacrifice in gardens, and burneth incense upon altars of brick. See their uh, Bob's note here. They're doing their worship in their own way to every devil except for the Lord. Verse 4. Which remain among the graves. What's in graves? Dead things, people. Dead. Spiritually dead. Physically dead. Which remain among the graves and lodge in the monuments. Which eat swine's flesh. Wow. You know, this was, reading this is like among probably the last time I knowingly ate pig. Yeah. Because God hates, God hates it. Now, when uh, Jesus was uh, going somewhere, he met somebody that had a herd of swine. And there was the guy that was in the tombs who was possessed of so many devils, they called themselves legion. Now, a Roman legion was about, I think it was like 2,000 men. And Christ asked this man, the devils that were in this man, he says, what is your name? And he says, we are, uh, my name is Legion, for we are many. So what did he do with the man that was hanging out in the tombs? The graves. He cast him out. But before he cast him out, they said, let us go into the herd of swine. And he said, go. Well, the pigs had enough sense to... Uh, They'd rather be dead than possessed of a devil. Now, if you want to read about this, you can read it in Matthew chapter 8. But I'm only going to read verse 32. And he, Christ, and he said unto them, Go. And when they were come out, they went into the herd of swine, and behold, the whole herd of swine ran violently down a steep place into the sea and perished in the waters. So even these pigs had enough sense that they didn't want to be possessed with devils. Is that one of the reasons why the Lord doesn't want us eating swine? I don't know. All I know is verse 4, which remain among the graves and lodge in the monuments, which eat swine's flesh and broth of abominable things is in their vessels. Listen to this. Have you ever heard this in church? Which say, now this is a rebellious people, which say 
Stand by thyself, come not near to me, for I am holier than thou. You ever meet somebody who thought that they were holier than you? I have. Do I think I'm holier than anybody else? Uh, not unless somebody puts a bunch of bullets in my body. That's the only way I'm going to be holier than them. Wow. Stand by thyself. Come not near to me, for I am holier than thou. The Lord says, These are a smoke in my nose, a fire that burneth all the day. Behold, it is written before me, I will not keep silence, but will recompense, even recompense into their bosom. What is recompense? It's payback, people. The Lord's going to pay these people back to their face. Verse 7, your iniquities, which is it? What is iniquity? It's sin. Your iniquities and the iniquities of your fathers together, saith the Lord, which have burned incense upon the mountains and blasphemed me upon the hills. Therefore, will I measure their former work into their bosom. Thus saith the Lord, as the new wine is found in the cluster, and one saith, Destroy it not, for a blessing is in it. So will I do for my servant's sake, that I may not destroy them all. Now Israel was uh, likened unto God's vineyard. But God is going to destroy part of the vineyard, the new vineyard. New how? Ah, I'm glad you asked that question. Well... In 2 Corinthians 5.17, you know that guy, Paul, that they say is a false apostle? Oh, yeah. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. How about Galatians 6.15? For in Christ Jesus neither circumcision availeth anything nor uncircumcision, but a new creature. All right, let's go back. Uh, let's see. Verse 8. Isaiah 65, 8. Thus saith the Lord, as the new wine is found in the cluster, and one saith, Destroy it not, for a blessing is in it, so will I do for my servant's sake, that I may not destroy them all. See, you're either in Christ or you're not. Verse 9. And I will bring forth a seed, children, progeny, descendants, and I will bring forth a seed out of Jacob and out of Judah, an inheritor of my mountains and mine elect shall inherit it, and my servants shall dwell there. There's that evil word, elect. There are people today that I think are wolves that'll tell you that that's a dirty word. God doesn't have an elect. Well, unless, of course, you're talking about the Antichrist over in the Middle East. But they say anybody can be saved, whosoever will, believeth. They can come to Christ. Well, if that's true, why are we arguing about illegals and immigration in the West? Bring them all in. If, they're, if they, anybody can be saved, we should embrace them with open arms and tell them about Jesus. Never mind that they come from a country where they perform cannibalism and voodoo and yeah, no. God has an elect. And it's not the Antichrist in the Middle East. It's not. I think it's God's, God's chosen people are those in Christ. Let's take a look at something. In the book of Galatians, you know, those Paul haters hate this book. Chapter 3 and verse 29. 
And if ye be Christ, then are, then are ye Abraham's seed, children, and heirs according to the promise. Are, not become, not spiritual, are the seed of Abraham. So, you know, and if ye be Christ, then are, not become, not spiritual. No, they are the actual, physical, literal seed of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. And if ye be Christ, then are ye Abraham's seed and heirs according to the promise. And Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, who Israel was called Israel, those are the children of the promise. And Paul is preaching to the divorced nations of Israel of Jeremiah chapter 3 and verse 8, who are going to be given the new covenant remarried in Jeremiah 31, 31. So, with that in mind, verse 9, Isaiah 65. And I will bring forth a seed out of Jacob and out of Judah, an inheritor of my mountains, and mine elect shall he inherit it. And my servant shall dwell there. And Sharon shall be a fold of flocks, and the valley of Achor a place for the herds to lie down, to lie down in, for my people that have sought me. But ye are they that forsake the Lord, that forget my holy mountain, that prepare a table for that troop, and that furnish the drink offering unto that number. Therefore will I number you to the sword. What does the sword represent? War. Therefore will I number you to the sword, and ye shall all bow down to the slaughter. Well, you know, when you're killed, your body's going to bow down, right? Oof. Therefore will I number you to the sword, and ye shall all bow down to the slaughter, because when I called, ye did not answer. When I spake, ye did not hear, but did evil before mine eyes, and did choose that wherein I delighted not. Therefore thus saith the Lord God, Behold, my servants shall eat, but ye shall be hungry. Behold, my servants shall drink, but ye shall be thirsty. Behold, my servants shall rejoice, but ye shall be ashamed. You know, in the... New Jerusalem, there's going to be fountains of living water. Fountains of living water. That's why the Lord says, My servants shall drink, but ye, the evil ones, but ye shall be thirsty. Verse 14. Behold, my servants shall sing for joy of heart, but ye shall cry for sorrow of heart, and shall howl for vexation of spirit. And ye shall leave your name for a curse unto my chosen. Oh, there's that dirty word again, elect and chosen. Oh, boy. Modern church world hates those two words. Unless, of course, you're talking about the Antichrist in the Middle East. And ye shall leave your name for a curse unto my chosen. For the Lord God shall slay thee and call his servants by another name. What did God call his servants? Israel, right? And Judah. Or Jew. But they're going to be called by another name. Huh, I wonder what that name could be, Christians. What could that new name be? Hmm, another name, a new name. I wonder what that is, Christians. Oh, I don't know. I can't figure it out. Verse 16. That he who blesseth himself in the earth, 
shall bless himself in the God of truth. And he that sweareth in the earth shall swear by the God of truth, because the former troubles are forgotten. The former troubles are forgotten. The things of this world are going to pass away. You going bald, your back hurting, pains in the neck. All those things are going to go away. You're not going to have to worry about paying the credit card bill or uh, how am I going to meet the mortgage this month? Or I'm having trouble with that 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 jerk at work. Mm -mm, nope. Because the former troubles are forgotten and because they are hid from mine eyes. Verse 17. For behold... I create new heavens and a new earth, and the former shall not be remembered nor come into mine. Why? Because you want to remember the good stuff, right? But be ye glad and rejoice forever in that which I create. For behold, I create Jerusalem. The Lord is going to create Jerusalem, a new one. Not this uh, present one. For behold, I create Jerusalem a rejoicing and her people a joy. And I will rejoice in Jerusalem. And by the way, Salem or Shalom means peace. So Jerusalem means basically city of peace. Something along those lines. I might be wrong. And I will rejoice in Jerusalem and joy in my people. And the voice of weeping shall be no more heard in her, nor the voice of crying. Now remember, Christ is called the Prince of Peace. So if you're a Prince of Peace, you got to have the city that you dwell in with peace, right? So, yeah. Verse 20. There shall be no more hence... Uh, no more thence and infinite days, nor an old man that hath not filled his days. For the child shall die an hundred years old, but the sinner, being a hundred years old, shall be accursed. And they shall build houses and inhabit them, and they shall plant vineyards and eat the fruit of them. They shall not build and another inhabit. They shall not plant and another eat. For as the days of a tree are the days of my people, and mine elect shall long enjoy the work of their hands, they shall not labor in vain, nor bring forth for trouble. For they are the seed of the blessed of the Lord, and their offspring with them. See, in the first part of this cha uh, chapter, we were reading judgment, but now to the remnant, the Lord is proclaiming blessing. Think about it. They shall not labor in vain, nor bring forth for trouble, for they are the seed of the blessed, the seed of the blessed of the Lord, and their offspring with them. And it shall come to pass that before they call, before they call, I will answer. And while they are yet speaking, I will hear. And don't fall for this Mandela effect crap. Satan does not have the power to supernaturally change the Bible. He's not in his little time machine going back into time and changing the Bible. What you remember is TV preachers and, and new Bible versions. It's always been the wolf and the lamb, not the lion. Verse 25. The wolf and the lamb shall feed together, and the lion shall eat straw like the bullock, the bull, and dust shall be the serpent's meat. They shall not hurt nor destroy in all my holy mountain, saith 
the Lord. Chapter 66, verse 1. This is the last chapter of Isaiah. Thus saith the Lord, The heaven is my throne, and the earth is my footstool. Where is the house that ye build unto me, and where is the place of my rest? Uh, this is along the lines of what the Lord said to, uh, I think, Solomon. I'm not sure. For all those things hath mine hand made, and all those things hath, have been, saith the Lord. But to this man will I look, even to him that is poor, and of a contrite spirit, and trembleth at my word. See, the Lord is going to have mercy upon those that humble themselves. Verse 3. He that killeth an ox is as if he slew a man. He that sacrificeth a lamb as if he cut off a dog's neck. He that offereth an oblation as if he offered swine's blood. He that burneth incense as if he blessed an idol. Yea, they have chosen their own ways, and their soul delighteth in their abominations. Whoa. What is an abomination? That is a, a sin that God really, 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 really hates. I mean really hates. God hates sin, all sin. But there is sin, and then there's abominations. And those that do abominations, well, verse 4 comes to mind. I, the Lord, I also will choose their delusions. What is a delusion? Well, that's when you believe something that's false. So, God says he's going to choose their delusions. He's going to make them think Something that's not true is true. I also will choose their delusions and bring their fears upon them. Because when I called, none did answer. When I spake, they did not hear. But they did evil before mine eyes and chose that in which I delighted not. And I know it sounds like I'm reading the same thing, but this was in the other chapter too. Verse 5. Hear the word of the Lord, ye that tremble at his word. Your brethren that hated you, that cast you out for my name's sake. Uh, didn't Jesus have something to say about that? That we would be hated for his name's sake? Uh, yeah, that's what Jesus said. You can read about this in Luke 21, 17. And ye shall be hated of all men for my name's sake. Matthew 10, 22. And ye shall be hated of all men for my name's sake. But, but, he that endureth to the end shall be saved. Huh. But, 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 Bob, uh, my preacher says that all I got to do is believe in Jesus. What do you mean endure to the end? Well, if I had a choice to believe Jesus or your preacher, I'm going to have to go with Jesus. But, hey, that's just me. How about Mark 13, 13? And ye shall be hated of all men for my name's sake, but he that shall endure unto the end the same shall be saved. Matthew 24, and verse 9, Then shall they, the wicked, deliver you up to be afflicted, and shall kill you. And ye shall be hated of all nations for my name's sake. And that name is Jesus. Nobody hates you because the you call him Yeshua HaMashiach. No. 
Isaiah 66, verse 5. Hear the word of the Lord, ye that tremble at his word. Your brethren that hated you, that cast you out for my name's sake, said, Let the Lord be glorified, but he shall appear to your joy, and they shall be ashamed. A voice of noise from the city, a voice from the temple, a voice of the Lord that rendereth recompense to his enemies. Did you know the Lord has enemies? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. In the book of Luke, chapter 19, and verse 27, Jesus speaking says, But those mine enemies, wow, Jesus has enemies. But those mine enemies, which would not that I should reign over them, and we're not talking about water falling from the sky. We're talking about ruling and reigning. R-E-I-G-N. But those mine enemies, which would not, that I should reign over them, bring hither and slay them before me. People, let me tell you something. There's coming a time when the sheep and the goats are going to be separated. Sheep are born sheep and goats are born goats. You don't become a sheep when you're born a goat because you believe in Christ. It doesn't happen. It doesn't work that way. Serpents are born serpents. And goats are born goats. And sheep are born sheep. It's just the way it is. Now you can be born a sheep and act like a goat. And a goat can act like a sheep for a certain amount of time to deceive people. But eventually their true nature comes out. And I once had somebody tell me, if you want to know what a person's really like, look at, look at who they hang out with. Look at who their friends are. That will show you all you need to know. In John chapter 10, we read the following starting in verse 22. And it was at Jerusalem, the feast of the dedication, and it was winter. So this is basically Hanukkah, people. And Jesus walked in the temple in Solomon's porch. Then came the Jews round about him and said unto him, How long dost thou make us to doubt? If thou be the Christ, tell us plainly. Yeah, Jesus, you've been talking in parables because you didn't want the wicked to understand. But now they're saying, tell us plainly. If you're the Christ, tell us plainly. Verse 25. Jesus answered them, I told you, and ye believe not. The works, or the miracles, the works that I do in my Father's name, they bear witness of me. But ye believe not because, ye believe not because ye are not of my sheep, as I said unto you. Woe. But ye believe not because ye are not of my sheep, as I said unto you. My sheep hear my voice, and I know them, and they follow me. And I give unto them eternal life, and they shall never perish. Neither shall any man pluck them out of my hand. My Father which gave them me is greater than all, and no man is able to pluck them out of my Father's hand. I and my Father are one. That's some heavy-duty stuff there, people. Whoa. All right, let's go back to Isaiah 66, verse 5. Hear the word of the Lord, ye that tremble at his word, your brethren that hated you, that cast, out, that cast you out for my name's sake, said, Let the Lord be glorified, but he shall appear to your joy, and they shall be ashamed. 
a voice of noise from the city, a voice from the temple, a voice of the Lord that rendereth recompense to his enemies. And I believe this is referring to Mary, verse 7. Before she travailed, she brought forth. Before her pain came, she was delivered of a man-child. Who hath heard such a thing? Who hath seen such things? Shall the earth be made to bring forth in one day? Or shall a nation be born at once? For as soon as Zion travailed, she brought forth her children. Shall I bring to the birth and not cause to bring forth, saith the Lord? Shall I cause to bring forth and shut the womb, saith thy God? Rejoice ye with Jerusalem, and be glad with her. All ye that love her, rejoice for joy with her, all ye that mourn for her that ye may suck and be satisfied with the breasts of her consolations, that ye may milk out and be delighted with the abundance of her glory. For thus saith the Lord, Behold, I will extend peace to her like a river, and the glory of the Gentiles, or nations, like a flowing stream. Then shall ye suck Ye shall be born upon her sides and be dandled upon her knees. You ever heard of a baby being bounced on the knees? Oh, yeah. Verse 13, As one whom his mother comforteth, so will I comfort you, and ye shall be comforted in Jerusalem. New Jerusalem, people. And when ye see this, your heart shall rejoice. And your bones shall flourish like an herb, and the hand of the Lord shall be known toward his servants, and his indignation toward his enemies. What is indignation? Extreme hatred. So the Lord's indignation toward his enemies. For behold, the Lord will come with fire. Woo! and with his chariots like a whirlwind, to render his anger with fury and his rebuke with flames of fire. For by fire and by his sword will the Lord plead with all flesh, and the slain of the Lord shall be many. They that sanctify themselves and purify themselves in the gardens behind one tree in the midst, eating swine's flesh, and the abomination, and the mouse, shall be consumed together, saith the Lord. For I know their works and their thoughts. It shall come, that I will gather all nations, I believe this is talking about all of Israel, all twelve tribes, all twelve nations, that I will gather all nations and tongues, and they shall come, and see my glory. And I will set a sign among them, and I will send those that escape of them unto the nations to Tarshish, some people say that's Spain, Pool and Lud, that draw the blow, bow, bow and arrow, that draw the bow to Tubal and Javan. Uh, some people say Javon, is Greece. And I will send those that escape of them unto the nations to Tarshish, Pool, and Lud, that draw the bow to Tubal and Javan, to the isles, or islands, to the isles afar off. Could that be talking about the isles of the United Kingdom, England, Britain? Possibly. I think so. Did you know Greece is a nation of islands? Yeah. To the isles afar off. How about Iceland and Greenland? Yeah. To the isles afar off that have not heard my fame, 
neither have seen my glory, and they shall declare my glory among the Gentiles, or nations. 20. And they shall bring all your brethren for an offering unto the Lord out of all nations upon horses and in chariots and in litters and upon mules and upon swift beasts to my holy mountain Jerusalem, saith the Lord, as the children of Israel bring an offering in a clean vessel into the house of the Lord. And I will also take of them for priests and for Levites, saith the Lord. Listen to this, verse 22, Isaiah 66, 22. For as the new heavens and the new earth, which I will make, shall remain before me, saith the Lord, so shall your seed and your name remain. And it shall come to pass that from one new moon to another, and from one Sabbath to another, shall all flesh come to worship before me, saith the Lord. And they shall go forth and look upon the carcasses, the carcasses, the bo dead bodies. And they shall go forth and look upon the carcasses of the men that have transgressed against me. For their worm shall not die, neither shall their fire be quenched, and they shall be an abhorring unto all flesh. What is abhorring? It means hatred. Hmm. And they shall be an abhorring up unto all flesh. Uh, people, I think I'm going to make this part three and then do eyes. We're going to do Revelation 20 and verse, I'm sorry, 21 and 22, Revelation. Um, I don't want this to be an hour and a half long. I'd rather break this up into shorter things. BitChute does not like long videos. Anything under an hour seems to work pretty decent. Anything over that uh, seems I got to load it three or four times before it takes. So, all right. Uh, now, this ties right into Revelation chapter 21 and 22. It really does. As we will see, same same bat time, same bat channel. And if you remember that on after school in the 60s, you're old, like me. So, all blessings, praise, glory, and honor in Jesus' precious name. Amen.